Hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is Travis Reed. I am the Bet Labs manager here at Sports Insights. And this is going to be a webinar to teach you how to effectively use Bet Labs in order to build your betting systems. Um, if you do not know what Bet Labs is, it's an interface that we've put together to let you access all of our data that we've accumulated and put it in an easy to use format. Um, so you don't have to do any uh, programming language or hours of Excel work or anything like that in order to build a system. Uh, you can simply use the interface that we built for you. Um, and that's what you're seeing on your screen right now. This is the Bet Labs homepage. Um, up here in the top left, that's where you can add any additional systems. Um, down here below, you'll see all of my systems that I've created for this account. Um, over here on the right, this is one of the key features of Bat Labs. Once you've actually um, created your system, it's automatically going to look at current games to see if there's any games that fit that system and just immediately let you know. So that way, once you've found something that you feel like you have enough uh, um, data on to bet, you don't have to go through combing the data day by day to see if these games fit your systems. It's automatically going to spit that out for you and make your uh, day a lot easier. Um, then we also have, down here at the bottom right, we have some of our articles uh, kind of uh, help you out once you purchase Bet Labs to let you know some of the systems that we've built and things like that. Um, if you saw our article that came out uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, the three characteristics of a good betting system, according to us, um, that would be sample size, uh, consistent results, and also not backfitting your data. Um, so what we're first going to do is take a look at uh, some examples of uh, some systems that kind of go against that. Um, so this first one, uh, it's called Nick Saban, and it's simply just looking at Nick Saban against the SEC. Um, so basically, since he's been at Alabama, how's he done in conference games? So you, uh, up here you'll see at the top uh, the record, 54.9% uh, average margin, your money won, and your return on investment. Uh, just to keep everything clear, Money One's based on a $100 bet each time, and all the lines that we use throughout Bet Labs are from Pinnacle. Um, now, basically, the law that this violates, in my eyes, is the um, you just don't have enough games uh, for a sample size here. Um, it's a good enough sample size to realize that Nick Saban's a good coach. Like, if you're the athletic director, you can easily make that assessment. Um, but, you know, if two of those wins or losses, all of a sudden you're looking at 26 and 25. And uh, with that small amount of gains, it's not something that I'd be comfortable enough um, betting uh, long term. Um, we'll go back to our Bet Labs home and we'll take a look at another one um, that violates our second rule, which is consistent results. Um, whenever we look at those graphs, we always like to see kind of the stair step. Um, and really what this does, it has that stair step going for it the like first you know six years and then you can see um, as it goes along it's obviously kind of tailed off. Uh, what this system is is we were looking at Big Ten unders um, so we're betting the under anytime the home team and the visiting team are both in the Big Ten and we're looking at conference play. Uh, that's what the months uh, signify down here with January, February, March. Um, but you can definitely see there was you know a lot of talk about you know the unders in the Big Ten are hitting whether it was poor offense, good defense, or the way they were officiated, uh, it doesn't really matter, but they were uh, definitely hitting. But you can see since, um, let's see, these last three or four years, you know, you had that last good year, you can zoom in, and then you can see it went down two years ago, had an awful year, and it seemed like uh, the bookmakers just made an adjustment there, and so the edge was gone with the Big Ten unders. Um, you know, it was just more prevalent, people knew about it, and once everyone hears about it, they had just gone. Um, so really, you lost your consistency there uh, with that system. Uh, the third one, and the one that we see most often, is you'll have a system that has great units one, good return on investment, it's positive every year, uh, but you backfit your data too much. Um, here's one where you're looking at almost $11,000 in units one. Uh, you have a 15% ROI, and you can see it's been consistent, especially over these you know last six years. But then you come up here to these criteria um, that were made are were used to build this system, and we're looking at visitors, uh, looking at games that were played on certain days of the week, and with uh, five certain umpires. Um, 
you know, that's where I just went through and just picked the top five umpires based on what the previous results were. Um, with any data point, there's going to be positive and negative. You can't just randomly pick the top five and expect that to continue to trend upwards. Uh, if anything, I would expect the opposite. Uh, you know, expect some regression to the mean there with some of these umpires and things like that. Um, but with this, you definitely backfit your data because there's, there's, it really doesn't pass the common sense test. And that's kind of the, once you've built your system, you know, does this make sense to you? Is there a reason why you would still bet this system? And this definitely does not fit that. Um, but enough of the bad ones. Let's take a look at one um, that may actually pass all three. And then uh, we'll take a look at how to actually go about building one. Um, so let me click on this. This is called Double Digit Dogs in Conference. Um, we're looking at NFL and spread results, uh, which is right around the corner. I'm sure everyone's excited. Um, but here are the criteria that we used for that. The game is played during the regular season, so no postseason or preseason games involved. Uh, the spread is between 10.5 and, and 24. Uh, what that means, those numbers being positive, is that is the dog. So they're getting 10.5 all the way up in 224. Uh, the game is a conference game, which means NFC versus NFC or AFC versus AFC. And then the previous game margin is between negative 45 and negative 4. Um, and what that means is that they are coming off a loss of 45 points all the way down to 4 points. Um, so anywhere between that range of a loss of that previous game, um, that's what that fits. And up here you can see the results, 80 and 44, um, over 120 games. That to me is enough of a sample size in the NFL. 64.5%, that's obviously good. Then you have your money one and your return on investment. Uh, but more importantly than, you know, is this a good system or is this a bad system, is how did, how did we reach this conclusion of numbers? I mean, I didn't just, you know, open it up and spit out these numbers. Um, and that's what we'll show you, what Bet Labs can do to easily find uh, these ranges and systems um, that give you these good results. So we're going to go ahead and just build this exact same system from scratch. And we'll show you how we can use Bet Labs to get to where we did. Um, so let me just create a new system. We'll just call it Webinar System and hit Create. And we automatically default you to regular season. Um, so we're already done there. And really once you get into a blank system, um, there's really three different ways you can go about building a system. A, you have a hypothesis and you just want to test it. Um, you know, how have dogs been in December? Uh, how do double-digit dogs do coming off of a loss? Boom, you plug in those and there's your answer. Um, the second way is you have some sort of general idea um, that you want to kind of expound upon. So you just have um, just a big picture idea. I think there might be something here. Let me go look into it and then go dig. The third uh, one is you can just comb through this data and try to find something positive. Um, now you can see we have a multitude of filters here, so combing through the data can be time consuming, um, but if you have the time you can definitely do that. Um, but I usually like to go in with some sort of idea that I, I think makes sense and then use Bet Labs to kind of further that and um, expound on that. Um, so my general idea going into this system was to look at conference games. Um, so I went down here to our matchup info and went to conference or not conference. Um, then I simply clicked conference and hit save. And my thinking here behind that was just the conference games are going to play um, much more often. Uh, with the way the NFL scheduling works, obviously this is going to include your divisional games, which you play twice a year. Um, and you only play the other conference once every four years. Um, so these teams are more familiar with their personnel, with their coaching, and just what they're trying to do. Um, so I was trying to find uh, something within that that could uh, be a positive system. Um, so really, once I have that, I start going through some of these main filters and try to see if there's uh, an inherent bias right off the bat. Um, one of those uh, that I use quite often is right here under the team info is favorites or dogs. Um, that one plus home and away are usually some two of the biggest filters that we see used and ones that I like to use. 
because um, usually that's the two main things that betters focus on. Is it a home dog? Are we looking at a, a home favorite, away dog, away favorite? Um, so those are two that I generally like to use quite often. So we'll click on favorite dog. And you can see it's actually losing um, no matter what. Favorites have lost a little over 56 units. And dogs have lost 25 units, uh, a little over 25. Um, so both are losers. Uh, even though this dog has, you know, a winning record there, um, you know, it wasn't enough to cover the VIG. But that does at least tell me that there probably are some dogs out there, maybe a range of dogs, uh, maybe at the key numbers or something like that, uh, that I can go into and look to see uh, if there is something there. So I'll go ahead and close that. Um, and now I'm actually going to go into our line info and look at that uh, exactly what I said. I think there might be some dogs that might be profitable. Um, so we'll go ahead and look at that. So here we have our spread range filter. And so this is giving you every range uh, from negative 22 all the way to 22. Uh, so within our current system of conference games, here's the biggest um, ranges that we have. Now we can take these sliders, move them left and right, um, and that'll change the record uh, dynamically. Um, but the best way that I've found, uh, one of my favorite parts of Labs is using this graph down here below. Um, you can see as I hover over these data points, um, it'll actually give me the record for each one. Um, so as I move to the right, I can see exactly, okay, um, there's a key number right there. Seven point favorites, 81 and 67. Uh, 11 units one. Uh, and keep going. Here's another one. Three point favorites. 148, 167. Um, but it makes you. It, you don't have to guess on the endpoints. You don't have to pick arbitrary endpoints. You can clearly see in this graph form. Okay, where have the negative endpoints been? Where have the positive endpoints been? Um, and that's where I started. Um, I got right to here. You see, uh, 10 is negative, and then right here at 10 and a half is positive. And right after 10 and a half, everything to the right of that looks pretty green as well. Um, so that's what I set as my minimum endpoint is 10 and a half. And then that'll redraw the graph for me, showing now 10 and a half and bigger. Uh, obviously, there are a few uh, negative spots in there. Um, but I feel like taking those out already would start to already backfit my data. Um, so if I took out 13, even though that was a loser, and kept 13 and a half and 12 and a half, um, that's where you would start to backfit your data just to improve your past results. Um, so we're just going to stick with the 10 and a half to 22 and hit save filter. Okay. Um, so now I've already improved it a little bit and then you just keep going. Um, so now I want to look at some other filters that might improve that. Uh, one of the things that we have that a lot of companies uh, will not have is we have this public betting data. Um, that's something that we track directly from seven sports books. Uh, we've done that for a long time at Sports Insights. And we've combined that with our other database so you can directly look at that. So now we can look at spread percentage. And we can look to see exactly how one, um, people are betting on this game to see if that you know, affects positively or negatively um, your results. And you can see same thing. You have this graph down here at the bottom. You can see every endpoint. If 19% of the bets were on that team, then it's 7 and 0. Um, and you can keep scrolling through each data point. Um, but as you look at the overall, you don't see any, you know, ranges or anything like that that jump out as far as, you know, here, like, you know, here's a good section or here's a good bad section without really backfeeding the data. Um, so with this filter, I, I would leave this one out. Um, so I just simply close that and start looking for another filter. Um, and since I've made this before, I obviously cheated. I know which one I'm going to next. Uh, but uh, I go down here to the uh, streaks filter, which is uh, we've definitely improved this recently, and there's a lot of new ones in there. Uh, but one of my favorite ones is the uh, previous game margin, just looking to see how they fared in their previous game, uh, whether they won, they lost. You can look at big blowouts either way, whether they got blown out by 45 or won by 45, um, and look to see how they did there. And the first thing I was going to look at with this filter, you can see um, positive numbers indicate a win, negative numbers indicate a loss. So I want to look at teams coming off of a loss. 
So I simply do negative 45 to negative 1. So now I'm looking anything, their last game was anything from a 1 point loss to a 45 point loss. And here I have my updated graph down there below. And um, the, the key thing with the losses, especially in the NFL as it grows more and more popular, um, people always, that sticks in their mind. There's already a bias we've seen. Once you've lost that previous game, you have to hear about it for six days on talk radio, ESPN, and that just sticks in people's mind. And a team is never as good or as bad as they played the previous week. Um, but you'll see constantly, you know, if you look at a team that just lost, especially, um, you know, if it was in bad fashion, they just looked horrible. Teams will jump off them the next week and say, okay, they're going to be that bad again. And most of the time, that's actually not the case. So that's why I immediately went to losses here. Um, but you can see on the graph at the far right, we actually have this negative uh, little hook there on the end. Um, and you'll see it actually stops at uh, 3. And 3 is obviously the key number in the NFL. That could mean that you lost on a late second field goal, a field goal in overtime, um, you know, something like that. And so really those close losses are something that I feel like you could, um, and what I did in this system, was I took off those, so I changed that to negative four. Um, I don't feel like that's backfitting like it is with the other one, because that actually makes sense to me. Um, you know, the psychology of that close loss, of that three-point loss, or something like that. Um, you know, that's something that I can, in my mind, I can make sense around um, uh, doing away with those games. Um, so that's why I went with negative 45 to negative four. Uh, now we have a lot of green, uh, still some red in there, but again, we're not going to just erase those just to try to improve our results, uh, and we'll simply hit save filter. And this is the exact same system that we saw um, when I first clicked on the double-digit conference uh, dogs, and you can even see um, a lot of times what I like to do is I'll go up here to the time period and you can look at certain seasons uh, when you're looking at a filter and ex see exactly how it's done on a season by season basis. Um, so I'll just sort here by season. And you can see this, A, it's good that there's no red there. It's never had a losing season. Um, but then you can also start checking these off with last season. So if you want to look at last three, uh, that dynamically updates again. You're 27 and 10. The last five seasons, you know, you're 44 and 21. Um, and you can always save that. But uh, so you're definitely trending upwards. Um, you know, it's something where you haven't backfit your data. You have plenty of games um, to where you, you know, over the course of the season, over the course of five years here, you have, you know, 65 games. Um, and it's something that also passes the common sense test. It's something where it makes sense. These conference games, you've seen a team more often than you're not. It's a big dog. A lot of times, you know, people don't understand these big dogs. They, it's usually you're betting on bad teams, which is another staple at Sports Insights. Um, but a lot of times you'll even get some extra point values there. And then you're also betting on them coming off of a loss. Um, so it really fits three things uh, that make sense when you're building a system. And it also fits all those mathematical philosophies that uh, we always encourage as far as... Um, the sample size is good enough, the consistency is good enough, and we didn't backfit our data. Uh, we have wide ranges for our game margin, wide range for our spread, and we didn't go into you know specific time of the day of the game or anything crazy like that. Because um, you could go in here and say we wanted to look at uh, the game number. Um, so we could look, okay, does it matter in early season? Okay, these last two games, we could just chop those off. You could constantly just uh, keep improving your system, and eventually your system is going to be about 20 and 1, and then you fall under the, um, you don't have enough sample size again. Um, so yeah, this would be a system that I would be, you know, comfortable uh, betting uh, continuing out through the NFL season um, for the fact that it fits all of those criteria. Um, if that's one of the key things. Um, you know about bet labs is that you can build those systems really quickly um, but you also have to have those kind of thoughts in your mind about why you know about how to use it um, and also you always have to have some sort of end game in mind when you build a system uh, and you can't just be going through there just plugging through data and then just have a huge system and it doesn't make any sense um, 
that's all I have for his uh, presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll gladly take those now. I see a few of them have already come through. Um, but you should be able to answer those or send those in uh, right there in that questions uh, section. Um, let's see. Is there a trial for the Bet Labs? Uh, there is. Um, we currently, it's a, a six day trial for $25. Um, if you guys do want to try that out, we uh, don't expect you to pay for the first month uh, all the way up front. Um, another one, does Bet Labs come with every sport? Uh, it, it does, or I guess I should say it can. We have uh, multiple levels of membership uh, with the Bet Labs. You can do anything from one sport uh, all the way up to unlimited sports. Um, so if you're just an NFL guy, uh, then obviously you don't want to be paying for the unlimited sports. But if you're a year-round better uh, and you want to start creating, you know, hockey systems now and baseball systems, um, then you can definitely do the unlimited sports. Um, all right, that's an interesting one. What's your favorite filter? Uh, I would say it's it's hard to narrow anything down to a favorite, um, but I definitely like the. I'll go ahead and go back into it. Um, the streak section is is a lot of fun to go through. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with that and, and it kind of plays on one of my favorite things which especially in uh, the bigger sports is uh, what people's frame of mind is of a team you know if you've lost you know three or four uh, and things like that um, you can see all these different streak filters I, I like a lot of these the you know recent win percentage against the spread you know if they've lost four of their last five um, things like that um, you know, you can look at an opponent that's, you know, won six games in a row against the spread. Um, and I, I like a lot of those streaks filters. Uh, I'd say those are some of my favorites um, as far as the ones I like to build systems off of, at least in, in terms of football. Um, let's see. Here's another. What kind of stats uh, can be used in Bet Labs? Uh, it's, it's different per sport. Um, for example, we're in the NFL right now. We have both statistics and stat streaks. Um, so right here we're looking at statistics and that's where we're looking at the average. Um, so we're looking at uh, team averaging, say, look at offensive points. We'll just go into that. It's easier to show. Um, so we're looking at teams that are averaging, you know, 30 points a game. Um, and then you can go on from there. Then you can look at home away, you know, then you can just keep layering these filters. Um, we also have these stat streaks. Um, so then you can do the same thing. Say you want to look at an offensive points uh, streak uh, where, you know, they've scored three straight games. We can change that. And they've scored at least, you know, 24 in each of the three straight games. Um, with basketball, it's, it's similar. Uh, you know, you have points, you have rebounds, assists, turnovers. Um, one of the big ones is we have three-point percentage. Um, so you can look at a team's, um, you know, for the season, their average percentage, and then also look at their last three days. Maybe they've just shot, you know, horrible the last three games, so they're actually a good shooting team. Um, that's something that you can uh, look at. Um, let's see, some of these, let's see, do you have... Uh, yards per play, whip, ERA, um, can you also put in rest? Uh, for some of those stats, uh, we, we don't have uh, like whip or ERA. That's something we'll probably have for next baseball season. Um, this is a newer product. We're uh, constantly evolving it and uh, adding new filters as users request them. Um, but as far as the rest and the bye weeks and things like that, that's something we do have. Uh, that's under the time period. Um, Right here, this days between games, uh, especially good in NFL if you want to look at bye weeks. Uh, we also have a filter in the NBA where you can look at games and number of days. Um, so if you want to look at um, you know teams playing three games in four days or four games in five days, that now happens with some of these weird TV scheduling, uh, you can do that. Um, you also can look at uh, one of the things we just added was the week numbers. Uh, so if you want to look to see how teams do, um, you know, in certain weeks, maybe just like weeks one through four, break it up into the quarters, uh, things like that. You can look at their game numbers that way. Um, let's see. 
Somebody says, I wish you had first half and second half results. Uh, we actually do for football, um, for both NFL and college. So, for example, we can look at first half. We can go to college football, uh, spread and game. And now we're looking at first half results instead of uh, full game results. Uh, same thing with second half. You just change that drop down at the, that, that first uh, Bet Labs home screen. Um, and you'll see, obviously, the spread ranges, um, you know, they can be a little bit bigger in college football than they are in the NFL. Uh, but we do have um, first half and second half for both uh, NFL and college football. And again, that's something we'd like to add for uh, basketball, for NBA and college basketball by the time those seasons roll around. And then eventually, uh, you know, first five inning lines for baseball uh, for next season. All right. Uh, how much does a six-month membership cost? Uh, we actually have a six-month membership uh, for, I uh, don't want to mess these numbers up, I believe 30% off um, for the unlimited sports. And then we also have a uh, one-year membership for 50% off. Um, so if you are interested uh, in the long-term memberships, um, you can definitely do that. Um, the unlimited sports, just so we're all on the same page, is uh, $2.99 per month. Uh, if you just want to do one sport, it's just $99 per month. Um, and then that, 90, that one sport does come with the trial if you want to do that $25 uh, for that first week, um, you know, just to try it out and see if it's something's going to work for you. You can definitely do that. Um, let's see. Do you have any good coaching systems? Um, I, I wouldn't say I have any good coaching systems. Um, we do have coaches as a filter. Uh, to be honest, uh, we haven't messed with it, or I personally haven't messed with it a whole lot um, to look to see you know, if there's any good systems built off of that. Um, one thing I did notice, um, you can go, I did that week one um, filter and then looked at just best NFL coaches, and Jim Harbaugh was actually 5-0 and as of week one, so obviously that's not a system, <laughs> that's a five-game sample, uh, but that was just interesting. As I, I was looking at uh, Harbaugh for the Ravens is one of the best, and John Fox for the Broncos is one of the worst uh, for that first game, um, just an interesting thing that we found there, um, but as far as an actual system with coaching, I, I don't actually have one. Um, let's see. Um, that's a good question. We get that a lot. Uh, the Bet Labs and the Sports Insights odds and picks, um, those are two totally separate memberships. Um, so if you want the Bet Labs to create the system, uh, that's, uh, we don't have a package deal with the odds or the picks. Um, but you know, if you're you know, wanting to you know, get both, you can definitely uh, call us up our customer service, um, and we can definitely help you get set up with those. Um, let's see. Do you have to look at spread in NBA and money line in baseball? Uh, no, you can actually look at any of the bet types for all the sports. Um, so for like, you can look at NFL, and then you can do spread, money line, or over under. You're not uh, stuck to just spread uh, for the NFL or just money line uh, for the you know MLB and NHL. Obviously, uh, for baseball. Um, if you're looking at spread or for hockey, um, that's going to be looking at the run line or the puck line. Um, but uh, yeah, you can do any three bet types, spread, money line, or over under for all three sports, or for all six sports, excuse me. And uh, how many years of data is available? Um, it actually does depend on the type of data that you're looking at, and it's mainly just because when we started archiving it as a com uh, as a company. Uh, so, for the most part, NFL, uh, most of the major sports will go back to 2003. Uh, for some of the college sports and things we started tracking later, uh, that'll go back to 2005. Um, so you're looking at eight to ten years worth of data. Um, some of the statistics will be five or six years worth of data because um, we just started tracking things at different intervals. Um, so, But uh, the good thing about it is once you jump into a system, um, you'll always have that graph down there at the bottom tells you ex exactly when it starts. For example, go back into this big 10 unders. 
um, and you're looking at, you know, this one starts in 2005, uh, which is what most of the uh, college sports start at. All right. I think that's most of the questions there. There's still a few, but it looks like some of them are repeats. And if I did miss one, I, I apologize. Um, you can always uh, contact us directly uh, at Sports Insights if you have any questions or anything like that about Bet Labs. Um, you can contact 877-838-2853. If you want to contact me directly, it's simply Travis at SportsInsights.com. Um, but uh, thanks for attending the webinar, um, and we'll. Uh, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>